I was just saying to pray for us. This one does work. I can hear myself. You can hear me, right? So just pray for us and just, you know, ask God to just come.
Praise the Lord. Well, good evening. My name is Nia Louis Lack. Uh, as a topic that we are here for as well, uh, I'm going to present on anxiety. Uh, this is part of our health, and uh, I think it is very important for us to have it. Um, I would begin by key highlights about anxiety. Um, this is a survey done by World Health Organization where we can be able to know, do we know that anxiety disorder, uh, the world's common mental disorder, affecting about 4% of our population. 301 million people. This survey was conducted in 2019. Do we also know that more women are affected by anxiety disorder than men? Do we know symptom of anxiety of 10 have onset during childhood or adolescence? Do we know approximately one in four people with anxiety disorder receive treatment for this condition? These are key facts. Well, what is anxiety? And then we can say anxiety um, as we are, everyone can feel anxious. Like right now, standing before you, I'm feeling anxious. Because it is my first time to be here, or to be before you, or a crowd like this. But people with anxiety disorder experience fear and worry, which is both intense and excessive. This feeling are typically accompanied by physical tension and other behavioral and cognitive symptoms. They are difficult to control, like I cannot control it if it happened or if it is about to happen. It causes significant distress and can last a long time if untreated. Anxiety disorder interferes with daily activities and can impair a person's family social and school or working life. That's the definition I'd like to share with you and then move forward, please. Symptoms of anxiety include uh, trouble concentrating or making decisions. It makes it very hard for us. When somebody has anxiety, these are the symptoms that you experience. Feeling irritable, tense or restless, experiencing nausea or abdominal distress, having heart palpitation, sweating, trembling or checking, trouble is sleeping, having a sense of impending danger, panic or doom, like as if there is something big that is going to happen. Type of, general, uh, of anxiety disorder are generalized anxiety disorder, panic disorder, agoraphobia, social anxiety disorder, separation anxiety disorder, specific phobia, selective mutism. Move on. Uh, this is a topic I choose to present, basically from the type of uh, anxiety disorder. What is panic? People with panic disorder have frequent and unexpected panic attacks. These attacks are characterized by a certain wave of fear or discomfort or a sense of losing control, even when there is no clear danger or trigger. Panic attacks of 10 include physical symptoms that might feel like a heart attack, such as trembling, tingling, or a rapid heart rate. Symptom of panic attack, you would feel a sudden and repeated panic attack of overwhelming anxiety and fear, feeling of being out of control because it is beyond your control as a person, or a fear of death, or impending doom during a panic attack. Imagine when COVID-19 was going on or was taking place. It was very scary for all of us. 
And as of now, we still experience post-pandemic, which is something that we fear the most. Social distance was one of the huge things at the time. And it is still ongoing, especially for some. For some that uh, got of it, it's okay. Move on. Who are, or who is affected by anxiety disorder? Well, this is a combined a statistic that anxiety disorder affect approximately 12% of Canadian. And then here it come to 24% of men affected and 36% of women diagnosed with anxiety in 2018 are affected. It also affect children. Sometimes we may think it does not affect children. Well, 9% of children were reported to have been affected. When it comes to age differences, we can see age differences according to the statistic that we see here, 18 to 29. And then the list goes. Can you pull it back, please? Sure. 30 to 40 to 44 uh, represent 36 percent, and then 45 to 59 represent 31 percent, 60 plus represent 16 percent of our population in Canada here. Move on. Well, I can encourage that please connect with your family doctor or family physician or somebody you know that you can talk to. Spiritually, we have our pastors, connect with them as well. In case of emergency, well, 911 is number one. And in crisis, distress center as well is something that you can resort to. Numbers are there, or maybe you can connect with somebody that can connect you with. Thank you so much.
I invite you to join me for prayer. Could we all please stand for prayer? Shall we pray? Eternal Father, we thank you so much for your mercies that are new every day. We thank you for Jesus. He died on the cross of Calvary to make salvation possible. We thank you for the footprints of hope series. We thank you for the evangelists, Pastor Samuel. We pray dear God that your anointing would be upon his life. And as he speaks the words of life, may we hear the Holy Spirit saying to us, this is the way. Walk in it. May we all receive the blessings that we stand in need of this evening. And when Jesus comes, my hope is that every one of us would be found ready and waiting to go to spend eternity with him. We thank you and we praise you for all your benefits. In Jesus' name, amen. Be seated. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Are you happy to be here? Yes. We're delighted to have you here. But let me give you a little um, uh, synopsis on what's happening. To the back, we have two washrooms. Then we have two here also. So don't, don't ever forget. I want you to know that um, we are on time. The preacher is here. And God has been good. Did I hear you say Amen. And so just in a little while, we're going to continue. But listen, let me just say this, that on Thursdays, there'll be no meeting. All right? So all the other days, we'll be having meetings, and I want you to keep that in your calendar. We continue tomorrow. We continue tomorrow, and we move on. It's two weeks, solid campaign, and we are delighted to know that you are here, and you're going to invite someone to come. So thank you very much. Just take note of these little items I just mentioned to you. And may God bless us as we worship him in spirit and in truth. Thank you and God bless.
Brothers and sisters, it is with a heart full of anticipation and joy that we stand on the brink of the blessings that God has for us. The speaker today is coming to us from the land of wood and water. He has traveled throughout North America and the Caribbean. He's well loved. And for many years, he served God through evangelism. His message, seasoned with grace and truth, has touched hearts and changed lives, transcending barriers, language, and culture. He's a sought after speaker, not because he seeks the spotlight, but because he carries the light of the gospel of Jesus. So as we, as he going to stand before us, let us open our hearts to receive not just the wisdom of his word, but the spirit moving as he bring the message home to us. So together, I want us to put our hands together and welcome Pastor Dr. Glenn Samuel, who are here with us to bring God's word. Thank you so much, Pastor Ishmael, Ezekiel, Augustus, Zachariah, Hezekiah, Ali. Good evening, everyone. No, 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 that sounds like it's on its way here. Let me try it again. Is it afternoon or evening? I'm trying to get you. It's evening. You're a wise person. Good evening, everybody. It is my joy to be here with you this evening, and I want to uh, say thanks to my friend and all the members of the team. I gather that the, the group here, we have the Garden Road. Could I see the hands of those from Garden Road? Garden Road, I, okay, wonderful. And thank you, I see a dancing hand over yonder, okay. Uh, Bridgeland, uh, Bridgeland, wonderful, wonderful. Then we go to Cornerstone, you are the chief Cornerstone, I see. All righty, okay, then I hear uh, Ghana. Where are the members of the Ghana church? Wonderful, and then we have the French Bethany. Beautiful, then we go to, uh, is it just in there? Wonderful, where, where are they? All righty, okay, I'm seeing. And then I see uh, Phil Can, Phil Can, Phil Can wonderful it's my joy to be here with you and uh we've been talking about it and praying about it and uh on behalf of my wife and three adorable girls who gave me permission to be here with you they would have preferred if i were uh, uh with them or they were with me but every now and then they give the old man permission to fly away from the nest you see and it is my joy to be here with you it's been quite a journey and uh if there's any evening you should miss, it should be this evening. Uh, and the reason you should miss this evening is that uh, I just concluded an evangelistic series back home in my home country. We have in our own conference, we have 246 congregations, uh, two high schools and six primary schools, and 102,000 baptized believers. And they tell me that for every 12 believers, one is a devil. So when you have 200 plus believers, uh, divide that by 12 and now, now, now if you tell them that I told you that, then, but it, but it was a very taxing encounter. And um, because I was leaving, there were so many things that needed to get done. And so I literally spent the last three nights at my office leaving Yesterday morning, I left my office at minutes after two to get home, to pack, to get to the airport at eight o'clock, and uh, traveled all day, and I got to, to Toronto, and I was so exhausted that I wondered about the plane, but then I discovered how exhausted I was. They put me on a plane called Porter, P-O-R-T-E-R. Now, back home in my country, the porters work at the hospital. 
and and uh, they are not needed every day, but every now and then you see them wheeling a patient who can't walk on his own. And so the plane that took me from Toronto to here is called Porter. And I, I understood the, the name based on my condition. I got into the hotel last, well, this morning, some minutes after two o'clock. And uh, the words are still sleeping. And so I hope they'll be, they'll be awakened by tomorrow afternoon. But it's good to be here with you. And uh, I bring you greetings from my conference offices and the entire team. And this year, we celebrate 80 years as a conference. This is our 80th anniversary uh, as a conference. And we, we thank God for his marvelous grace and his loving kindness. And we look forward to the day when we'll be spending no more anniversaries down here. This land of ours, this world of ours is in trouble. We are a planet in trouble. And uh, I just want to thank God for the opportunity he has given so we can be here together. During this week, I'm expecting God to do something special for all of us. I'm expecting God to answer prayers that maybe you have not yet prayed. I said there are answers in heaven for prayers that you have not yet prayed. I'm expecting God to do some miracle for somebody who's been expecting a miracle and waiting for a long time. Somebody said he's an on-time God. There is the right timing and sometimes we are frustrated because God doesn't answer our prayers the time we want him to. Have you ever had trouble with God? I, I, I'm a real person. I, I love to talk to real people. Could I see the hands of some real people in here? Every now and then, you have some questions for God. I, 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 well, 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 I see one, two. Let me try to... Every now and then, you, you wish that you could say, come on here, let, let, let's knock some fists and get this thing over and done with. Huh? But, but I'll tell you that your hands are too short to fight with him. Are you listening to me? But... but, but the wonderful thing about my God is that he's a loving God who deals with real people handling real life in a real world like ours. And because of who he is, it's a joy to call him father. I know you just prayed and I just want to ask you to pray with the old man one more time. Oh Lord our God, this is your place these are your children this is your moment we ask that you would come thou found of every blessing inhabit the precincts of this conference room sit down beside us stand up in this place be our healer be our teacher we pray, Almighty God, you'll bless our hearts tonight with a word from heaven. In this introductory message to this series, we ask that you would anoint your word and may it accomplish that which you send it to for the glory of your name and the blessing of our hearts is our prayer in Jesus' name. And let God's children say, I want to talk with you tonight about an urgent email an urgent well let me say it this way an urgent text message an urgent text message i wish i had time to talk to you about the man who sent the first text message maybe i should give you that as a research for tomorrow evening the man who sent the first text message how many words did it have how long was it and to whom was it sent what was its intent but now it has become this common way of communicating. I was stunned when, when uh, I'm upstairs in my room, my girls are in their room and my wife is in the kitchen and they are communicating by text to their daddy. I'm in the same house. Are you listening to me? I'm in the same house. This is the communication age where we seldom talk verbally but we communicate by text message the truth is that god uh, does not get new information 
And I want you to understand that there's an urgent text message that he has for, for us. There's an urgent text message that God has for this generation. We are familiar with the signs of the times. If there is ever a generation that is overwhelmed with with stress and the issues of our culture and our time, it is this one. Allow me then to run through tonight as we get our sails set for this week. I want to take you to the Gospels. I love the Gospels. I love Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And if you are familiar with the Gospels, there are some peculiar stuff about the Gospels. Matthew has this long list of genealogy. Uh, 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 Luke has it, but there's, uh, my favorite is John. Uh, uh, John, this brother, uh, no birth in uh, a manger, no, no long list of genealogy. No, this one beget this one, and that one beget that one. John seemed to have just one message on his mind, and he opens up in the first chapter. In beginning was the word. And the word was with God and the word was God and he was anxious to tell us that God loves us so much he chose to dwell among us. Luke, on the other hand, uses human interest story. You, Luke seemed to be touched with the feelings of human frailty. Luke would use the stories that we can all identify with. Luke would make reference to him as the son of man. Repeatedly, Luke refers to him as the son of man, one that looked like us, one that belonged to us, one that is familiar with our troubles, our struggles, our issues down here. Luke, on the other hand, uh, carries the same story that Matthew and Mark has. The story tonight comes from Luke 21. What book did I say? Luke I'm going to give you time if your Bible didn't get a visa to come to church. Uh, look in your neighbor's Bible. We're going to Luke, the 21st chapter. We're going where? We're going to Luke 21. And I want to talk with you about an urgent text message. There's a message in the text that is urgent. Luke 21. And it is in verse 22. That's Luke 21 and verse 22 said for these be the days of vengeance that all things which are written may be fulfilled these be the days of vengeance that all things which may be written may be fulfilled and you jump down with me to verse 25 and you hear Luke picking up right where Matthew has it Luke says and uh, verse 25 there shall be signs in the sun by the way by the way did anybody here see a glimpse of the eclipse I, I was looking for it but I couldn't find it for I saw a sun all day long where I was. Well, well, all right. Okay, I thought I was the only one. A folk drove for miles to, to see what happens when, when the moon gets between the sun and the earth. Huh? Uh, the lunar eclipse. But, but I'll, I'll wait for the next one. I'll wait for the next so, so he said here, and there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity and then verse 26 says men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking at those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken now, the interesting thing here is that if I had the time to show you the counterpart, Matthew, Mark, and Luke carries the same message, excepting that Luke uses a certain word three times in the original context. He, he said in verse 20, uh, Five, there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon, upon the stars, uh, uh, and in the stars and upon the earth, distress of nations. Distress of nations. Men's hearts failing them for fear, looking at those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Distress of nations. And in the pericope, he, 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 he 
throw a word at us. He talks about perplexity, but then he said pestilences in diverse places. Matthew picked up the same stuff and said there shall be pestilences in diverse places. Mark picks up the same stuff and, and, and he used the same word pestilence. He talks about great perplexity. Men's hearts failing them for fear. This issue, this, this pestilence. And I thought that I needed to spend some time on it. And so since I know I was coming and I arrived in Canada, I decided this morning I would look to see uh, what is this issue that, that, that even Oxford or Co-Build Dictionary would, would define as a disease of abnormal growth. Uh, 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 and, and so, beloved, I want to help you understand here that, that God does not waste words. He does not waste words. Regardless of the color of our skin and the content of our head and the texture of our hair and the size of our assets and our beauty, be it only in your mind. My friend is gone. I, I said that line just for him. Because he feels he's handsome, but I think it's only in his mind. I just said, my friend, I didn't tell you who he is, so don't you know, go t spelling anything on me. Because I have three friends, and we, we call ourselves the three ugly musketeers. But one is so ugly that I tell him that if ugliness was electricity, he would power up all of Canada. <laughs> Are you listening to me? But, but let me leave my friend alone. I, I hear the preacher, regardless of the color of our skin and the content of our head and the texture of our hair and the size of our assets, we are bothered by the same thing. We are bothered by the same thing. Regardless of the size of our country, we are bothered by the same thing. And so in my brief reading this morning, I decided to look at... Uh, descriptions of pestilence and strange enough that 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 one scholar would would put cancer in that category and because he puts cancer in that category i decided let me do some reading on canada and here's what i found in the february 2 2024 report on cancer in canada it is said that 2022 Cancer was the leading cause of death. The projection then by your own uh, research declared that 24.7% of the deaths in 2022 was from Can in, in Canada alone. I'm not talking about the world now. I'm talking about right where we are. 24.7% of all the deaths in 2022 was from cancer. You may have heard that the leading cause of death is heart disease. Well, in your country, that was only 17.2%. Listen to what I read this morning as I looked at where I'm going to be talking to you from. It says, every hour in 2023, an expected 27 Canadians would have been diagnosed with cancer. Every hour in 2023, an expected 27 Canadians would have been diagnosed with cancer, 10 of whom would have died. Well, let me tell you, the American Cancer Society said that in 2023, their projection was 1,958,310 new cancer cases. The death from cancer in the U.S., 609,800. 120. According to your report from your country, a report that was given April 11, 2024, that is this April 11, 2024, that's yesterday. They were looking on pestilences, looking on deadly diseases, and I thought it piqued my interest because they gave the most recent stats on that fellow that we're happy he's gone. What's his name? COVID. That fellow? Well, maybe the men would say that sister. COVID. 
And your report said that the total COVID-19 deaths in Canada, are you ready for it? The total cases, 4,946,090, the total deaths, 60,000. But hear this, hear this. You thought that COVID had the record. But listen to your own story. In 2020, 83,300 persons died from cancer in Canada. That's 83,300 persons died from cancer in Canada. Topping the list was not breast cancer, not cervical cancer, not prostate cancer, not colon cancer, but topping the list was lung cancer. The air we breathe is affected. And sometimes we put stuff in our system that aid the process of lung cancer. In 2023, the projection, and it wasn't far from that in reality, 86,700 cancer deaths from a total uh, group of 239,100. And they ended that report. I said the report was April 11. They ended that report by saying cancer is on the rise all over the world. Listen to the preacher. It's not just senior citizens. It's not just poor folk. It's not just people from one ethnicity. Because sin is no respecter of persons. Pestilence is no respecter of persons. I know that you have been focusing on maybe the text that talks about wars and rumors of wars. And yes, that's true. Because God did declare that a special feature of these last days is this runaway stuff with wars. This 20th century into the 21st has been the bloodiest in human history. And listen to me. It's fascinating that Jesus, in looking at the signs of his coming, would use wars when wars is not uncommon. But here the preacher, he said, in a significant context, it will be a sign of his coming. The 20th century saw its first world war killing over 20 million persons, 1914 to 1918, and yet a short time afterwards, 1939 to 1945, over 50 million of our human members were slaughtered by war. Someone said that if you were to gather all the blood shed by wars in the 20th century, you could float the world's largest vessel sailing on human blood alone. Jesus said, as the time drove near, not only would there be wars and rumors of war, and I'm fascinated by this truth that after World War I, Mankind looked at the slaughter, they looked at the senselessness because not only is it that many were left maimed, but hunger and deprivation and starvation followed the, the, the reign of war. And so they came together, the 21 members of the Security Council of the United Nations, they came together and their coming together was intended to prevent wars. The United Nations came up and the symbol is two olive branches almost joining hands together, symbolizing that they would represent that group that would ensure that there would be no more wars. Yet, it would not surprise you to know that one member of that great security council started war on almost a small neighbor. Jesus said, 
When you see these things, when you see man's powerlessness to prevent that which is causing trouble for the majority, when you see man's helplessness, listen to the preacher. Never before have we ever had so many universities and schools of great learning as we have now. We boast prestigious halls of learning and yet there's so much barbaric behavior. We boast great universities, great hospitals, great technology, modern scientific marvels. We boast brilliant sons and daughters who are medical doctors. I have a daughter who is a doctor and another who is finishing. We have great doctors of great learning and yet, beloved, our planet is facing more and more incurable diseases. We are running out of answers. We flex our fist of independence in the face of God. And every now and then he reminds us in the words of Jeremiah 10, 23 and Jeremiah 9, 23. Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Let not the mighty man glory in his might. But the one who glories, let him glory in this that he knows the living God. And the next verse is an awesome verse. It says, O Lord, I know. Jeremiah said, I know. That the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man that walketh to direct his steps. We could have 10 earned PhDs, but we do not have the wisdom to live our lives independently of God. A young man in my country some years ago sat his exam and he had nine distinctions and one credit. He took his daddy's M9 and blew his own brains out, leaving a note behind that says, I should have gotten 10 distinctions. With all that intellectual power, he did a stupid thing because we cannot live our lives independently of God. During days of depression, including the challenges of COVID-19. I watched with horror in New York City. A man climbed up on one of those tall buildings. The police was trying to clear the street and he plunged from the roof to his death because of depression and distress. The text declare that in the last days there'll be distress of nations. We are distressed about the fact that we send our kids to school, but we don't know whether or not they'll come home alive. What could helpless kindergarten children do to a grown man with high-powered weapons? He comes in and he sprays bullets at will, leaving many dead, including teachers. Distress of nations with great perplexity. We go shopping with no security or any uh we don't have the assurance we'll get home alive this is the world in which we live you're driving home you're being careful you have all your aspirations your plans your dreams your hopes all set for a great retirement you're driving home carefully thinking of your wife and children with all the plans for your business for the next day and here comes a car driven by a drunken driver, and you know who's always dead? The one who's always right. Distress of nations with great perplexity. In times like these, the only security is in the hands of the God who never sleeps. You say, preacher, but don't you know that Christians die? Yes, I know that. But since Christians die and non-Christians die, which would you prefer? To die without any hope of ever living again? Or to die knowing that death will not have the last word over you? This is the world in which we live. I don't seek to frighten you, sir. I don't seek to scare you, ma'am. But hear the preacher, hear the preacher. When the Bible talks about pestilence in these days... It might shock you to know that today you feel okay. One visit to your primary care physician 
And you ordered full body test analysis and blood works and then you go back for the results and he tells you you have stage four cancer. This is the world in which we live. A world of great uncertainty. A world of great perplexity. A world in which beauty and masculine prowess and feminine charm and financial assets can give us the kind of inner peace and security that we seek. A world in which our joys are short-lived and our sorrow seem permanent. A world in which our pleasure turns to pain. In this world, I've buried more young people than I've buried old people. Hear the preacher when the Lord God says there shall be pestilence in diverse places. It's in every country, every continent, on every island. And maybe you're sitting here and you may have buried loved ones dead from some diseases that you wondered why did they die. And there's so many doctors around us. But beloved, I didn't want to spend the evening with you uh, with morbid fare and uh, sad reflections. I just want you to know that as you look around you, when you see these things that are so inexplicable sometimes, there's an answer. God says, listen, it will not have the last word. This is but our introductory evening. And I want to help you understand this. The signs of the times are all around us. The signs are all around us. I have gone to some of the world's prestigious places. I've seen beauty. I've seen power. I've seen stout, proud, stately, le uh, legendary men. But many now lay in their dusty grave. And you ask, what is then the reason for this life? I want to help you understand that Cancer, though deadly it is, will not have the last word. I want to help you understand that no matter what the deadly disease is that you may have to contend with, it will not have the last word. Jesus brings them to our attention. Matthew, Mark, and Luke picks up the story and said, listen, these combinations, wars, strives, pestilence uh, in diverse places, earthquakes and stuff, we'll talk some more about them, but this is just our introductory platform, and I thought I'd spend some time on the word pestilence. Pestilence in, in every place. No respect of persons. You can't buy it off. You may have read books by Hare Krishna. Why do bad things happen to good people? Where is God when I hurt? Luke picks up human interest stories and he gives us a Jesus who is always present where suffering is and he leaves them happier than he finds them. This is who he is. And I want to help you understand that Jesus is not a figment of man's imagination. You want to read even outside the Bible. I love reading Josephus' history. I love looking at artifacts and stuff that, that authenticates the word. And in ancient texts outside the Bible, there is the trial of this, this Galilean, and they call his name, but, but without his name, they spoke about Pilate having this special, this prisoner. I want to help you understand that Jesus is a fact of history. I've come to tell you, beloved, that, that agnostics and atheists can kill him by their unbelief. Pilate thought that he could silence and wash his hands. But even in Pilate's history, as the history of Rome is documented outside the Bible, Pilate's name is there and the special trial finds its way in Josephus' record. That we serve a God who lived amongst men, who broke the bands of death asunder, 
We serve a God who is the author and the finisher of our faith. We serve a God who went to the graveside of his friend. And when he called him by name, death could no longer hold Lazarus any further. And it's amazing when you think that Lazarus was in an advanced state of decomposition. But it's just like the power of God. He will call death back to life. He underlines his power by stories that others can testify that he is everything he claims to be. And I stopped by your hall this evening to tell you that he is sending an urgent text message to get our attention. He said, listen, these are signs of the last days. But I will not conclude without giving you one of my uh, favorite urgent text messages from the last book of the Bible. It is in the 14th chapter of Revelation. There's an awesome text message there that will bring to an end all of human suffering. There's an awesome text message there that brings consolation to all the troubled sons and daughters of this troubled planet in perplexity and distress. For John would not end his writing the same John who wrote St. John, the same John who wrote 1st John, 2nd John, 3rd John, the same John wrote Revelation. And allow me just to pa pause and tell you that, that, that he's such an awesome John that, that he knows what we want to hear some, some stuff he said. He said, my eyes have seen him, my ears heard him, my hands handled him. He is no disembodied spirit. Those that say that Jesus walked, and when he walks, he leaves no footprints. But John wrote to that generation and said, yeah, I saw him, I heard him, I touched him, I followed him. And this John in the last book of the Bible gives us an urgent message from the lips of our Savior. John gives the urgent text message for this generation. I saw a messenger flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to them that dwell on the earth, to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. He didn't want to leave everybody out. I've been to Germany, didn't get to meet his people. And uh, I've been to Belgium. And funny enough, uh, the Belgium people may say, but well, what a fool, fool fellow. Because my special recollection of Belgium, I think they have the most beautiful marble tombs anywhere. I lay down on marble tombs in Belgium and took my picture. So at least I can say, if, they, if he died and was buried in a poor grave, at least he laid down on a rich man's grave. I've been around the world and I've seen spots of beauty that may not be your choice. But John wants everyone to know that even though Canada is the cleanest country on the planet, that's my story, and I'm sticking to my story. A clean country, but a country that's not clean of cancer. A clean country but a country that's not clean of suffering. A clean country, but a country when you look at the number of young people who died last year, you get a staggering figure. I looked at the stats, looked at the males, looked at females, looked at the staggering number of young people in your country that died in 2023. John's urgent text message in the 14th chapter says, Fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment has come. John's urgent text message says, when you look on the fact that your assets can disappear, John's urgent text message says, when you look at the fact that your youth with vim and vigor and vitality can dissipate, when you look at the fact that your beauty will disappear, your masculine charm and prowess will disappear, one, one encounter with sickness and the nice curves and contours give place to ugly wrinkles. One encounter 
and the strength fails and you can't lift the fork to feed yourself. One encounter and you can't drive your Tesla to work. One encounter. Just one encounter. Overnight. Listen to me. Just one encounter overnight. If ever you are tempted to feel that you are larger than life. Hear the preacher. We need God. Paul says in him alone we live and move and have our being. And John says, I saw this messenger. The Greek word for angel simply means a messenger or a message. I saw with speed. He speaks of the universality of the call of God. Flying through the midst of heaven. God is in a hurry to bring hope to humanity. John said, I saw him flying through the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to them that dwell on the earth, to every nation, every tongue, every kindred, every people, every age, every sector of society, saying with an urgent voice, fear God. An urgent text message to every age. God brings to our attention the universality of his love to humanity. The universality of the gospel is pictured here. I saw him flying in the midst of heaven. Wherever sin abound, wherever human heart and human woes abound, wherever tears are ever shed, wherever sorrow ever come, God is sending this urgent message to help you understand someday he's going to dry your tears. The universality of the gospel brings to us God's concern. He has a universal concern for the tall like me and the short like you. He has a universal concern for black and white, rich and poor. Are you listening to me? For God is anxious to bring an end not only to cancer but to every pestilence in diverse places. He's anxious. If you ever ask God, God, what's your day like? And he'll tell you this. Maybe he'll answer you this way. He'll answer you, my child, of the seven point odd billion persons. I've seen thousands dead today. I've seen thousands of youngsters shot to death. I've seen thousands of wives being beaten up. I've seen thousands of husbands. If you ever ask God, how is your day, God? Maybe you'd be left staring because he has this breath of knowledge of all of us. And the amazing thing is that he's in a hurry to bring hope He's in a hurry to bring final healing. He's in a hurry. And that's why this urgent text message of the 14th chapter, verses 6 through 12, is called God's final message to a lost planet. The everlasting gospel is God saying to you, Hang on in there and place your hands in mine because pestilence will not have the last word. This urgent text message comes to every businessman as God is saying, listen, you're sitting at your desk today, but you may not be able to look through your final balance sheet tomorrow. So balance your life with work and worship. Balance your life. God is saying, listen, listen, listen. He's saying, plan, work hard, and, and plan smooth, and, and plan smart. But know this. Know this. Our world is infected so much that the water you drink that's pure, if you were ever to put a microscope to look at it, maybe you wouldn't drink water for the rest of your life. The air we breathe is so polluted. 
the food we eat, because our planet is exploding its population, we have to find ways of mass producing food to feed the multitude. Since the rising of the sun this morning, 156,000 persons died from starvation. Since the rising of the sun, what do we do in order to treat with this kind of need and desire to feed an ever-expanding population? We must produce food so we eat food that makes us fat but don't make us strong. We must produce protein that the growth hormones with which we feed them sometimes take over our own body. God is anxious to bring hope and meaning to a planet in trouble. God is anxious to bring solace and consolation. Listen to me. John said, I saw him flying in the midst of heaven. He's carrying this gospel to every nation, every kindred, every tongue, every people. It brings the universality of the claims of God to all of us. It brings the universality of grace. It brings this universality of hope that wherever human heart and human woes abound, let every Christian tongue proclaim this good news that Jesus saves and is coming back again. John said, fear God. It doesn't mean to be afraid of him. Acknowledge him. Know that he's the master, we're the servant. He's the potter, we're the clay. He's God, we're man. Fear God. Acknowledge his sovereignty. Know that he is large and in charge. Love to read a book by uh, Karen Armstrong uh, as she looks on the world's great religion. And, and, and I studied Sigmund Freud and, and all of those guys. But, but there's a guy in there from Frederick Nietzsche. I love to talk about him. Brilliant intellectual scholar. Frederick came up with this issue. He packed German halls with thousands. God is dead. He influenced great minds. He influenced the minds of great university scholars. But hear me carefully. Our intellect is just like one grain of sand on God's continent of wisdom. Frederick Nietzsche mocked God, but on his deathbed, he screamed out, come back, come back, come back, my unknown God. Come back, don't let me die like this. I love the music of Beethoven. But not even great musicians could be satisfied by music alone. And his friend said, he thinks Beethoven died angry at God because when he found him, he found him with a clenched fist and his eyes partially open, staring up to high heavens with an ugly snarl on his face as if angry at God. John says, I saw this universal claims of God bringing hope to all humanity. And he wouldn't end it excepting he added to it the 21st chapter from verse 1 to 4. He says, I saw, I saw a new heaven. I saw a new earth. What else did you see, John? He said there was no more suffering, no more sickness, no more pain, no more death. Can I add something in there? Well, no, I wouldn't add. Can I, can I expand on what's there? No more pestilence, no more distress, 
No more cancer, no more SARS, no more COVID-19, no more automatic weapons shooting innocent babes and children. No more, no more, no more. For the former things are passed away. No more sorrow, no more tears, no more pain, no more suffering, no more sickness. The former things are passed away, for God will not rest until every valley ex is exalted and righteousness covers the earth one more time as waters cover the rolling seas. I'm done. But he asked me to bring you an urgent text message urgent message. He said, these be the days of vengeance. It seems as if disease has come at this planet with a vengeance. It seems as if diseases of all kinds have enveloped humanity with a vengeance. For we have disregarded environmental con concerns. We have disregarded good common sense practice. And so we have unleashed on the planet deadly and destructive agencies and they come at us and leave us with great distress and in great perplexity. But that's not how the story ends. I'm done. I'm done tonight. I'm done. Because God says the tabernacle of God will be with mankind. The dwelling place of God and wherever God dwells, sickness will have no place there. Wherever the living God Almighty tabernacles, sorrow will have no place there. Injustice will have no place there and death will be a thing of the past. And tonight, I want to take your name home talk with God just for you. And I'm going to ask my ushers and my pastors and all of the helpers here to put a card in your hand. This is but our introduction to our short sojourn. And I'm going to ask them to give a card to everybody. And if you don't have a pen or pencil, they'll give you a pencil. So uh, I'm going to tell you what's on the card even while they are giving it out to you. John says, I saw this messenger with the universality of the gospel covering every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. For there is not a land where there is no distress. There is no place on the planet without perplexity. There is no place on the planet without human hurts and human suffering. There is no place on the planet where tears have not stained the cheeks of God's children. There is no place on the planet where there is not some concern. We go to bed with concerns. We wake up concerned. And so the claims of the everlasting gospel comes to every man, woman, boy, and girl, to every nation, every kindred, every tongue, every people. And the card simply says, I want to be ready when Jesus comes. For when he comes, there'll be no more cancer. When he comes, no more pestilence. When he comes, no more distress. I want to be ready when Jesus comes. No more sickness. I understand the message. I will not resist the Spirit of God. I want the Holy Ghost to lead me into baptism. And I want to help you understand this. Even on this opening evening, it's the opening of your heart to Jesus. It's the doorway to the kingdom of God. The third statement, I am not a Christian. I want to repent and prepare for baptism. And God is in a hurry to save a lost world. God is in a hurry to relieve folk of distress and perplexity. God is in a hurry. In this day and age, read the headlines of our times and discover we are bothered mentally. 
There is mental stress and disorder. The last one said, I'm a backslider. I used to walk with Jesus. I don't want to die like this. I want to recommit my life to God and be baptized. You, maybe you once walked with Jesus. This is then the universal claims of God bringing hope, bringing peace, bringing salvation, bringing wholeness, bringing this understanding that sickness and brokenness won't have the last word. A sorrow and death will not have the last word. Fill the card out and you turn them in. I want to hold the buckets with your cards as we pray together. I want to hold the buckets with your cards as we lift our hearts to our Father in heaven. Regardless of the size of our nation, regardless of the size of our assets, we've come to understand that no one has escaped this broken, battered world with all its trials and all its troubles. No one has escaped this broken, battered world with all its perplexities. And although Matthew and Mark covers the same issues in the sermon by Jesus, Luke in his piece on it talk a lot about the word pestilence and distress. He seemed to come right down our street for we battle with breast cancer, we battle with prostate cancer, we battle with lung cancer, we battle with cervical cancer, we battle with liver cancer, we battle with brain cancer, we battle Never in the history of our planet has cancer ever been as widespread as it is. Never in the history of your country has it ever been that there have been so many persons dying from cancer beyond the rate of heart disease beyond the rate of other natural causes. It's saying something to us. It is saying something to us. Stop, look, and take note. If you put the cards in one basket so I can have them in one hand, and as he plays softly, Maybe there's someone here to sing a song for us as we lift our hearts to our Father in heaven. But I close this introductory word tonight just to help you understand that there is not a single nation that is not touched with great distress. There's not a single race that is not touched with great perplexity. There is not a single person, regardless of your age, the color of your skin, the texture of your hair, or the content of your head. But thank God, he comes with hope to all persons. And as he sings, Yes. Most For we can't live without him. Lord, and he speaks peace. No tender voice like mine. He speaks peace. Can peace afford. In the midst of our trouble. Oh, I need 
He speaks peace in the midst of our incurable distress and diseases. He speaks hope in the midst of our brokenness. He speaks wisdom in the midst of the confused nature of our world and of our minds. I'm conscious tonight that the world as broken as ours need a God who can put it back together. Would you stand with me as we approach the throne of grace and mercy? I need thee. Yes. And I'm happy tonight no matter what you've done or where you've wandered or how broken you are or how fearful you are he's here to bless to bless you in the midst of your brokenness to bless you in the midst of your current issues to bless you regardless of the struggles you're in we lift our hearts in prayer Oh, Lord, our God, thank you. Thank you for the truth that sorrow and sickness and death and struggle will not have the last word. We acknowledge, God, that our world is broken up, that in this wonderful country, so many are dead from cancer so many are dying from cancer so many are diagnosed daily unknown god to us this staggering rate we thank you that you send this universal message of hope not just to this country but to every country on this planet because you are a caring God you will once again purify the air that we breathe you will once again disinfect the earth you will almighty God not only bring clean air and pure water but you'll make our lives whole again. And so I lift up to you every name on these cards. In this introductory message tonight, in this introductory word, we can trust our learning we can trust our wisdom but there are issues that we contend with that baffles our intellect but that you bring hope in the midst of our hopelessness you bring healing you're bringing salvation and I place this congregation at the mercy seat and God I place them there not only as a group but I ask you to be with each one as an individual I ask you God to bless each one as a person because each one here has his or her own peculiar need of you we go from this place tonight saying thank you Thank you. You've kept us alive. Thank you. Watch over us while we sleep tonight. Give us a good day tomorrow. Bring us back tomorrow evening. As we open your word. Bring us back tomorrow evening, God, with an answer to someone's prayer. Bring us back tomorrow evening, God, with hope 
where someone feels hopeless. Bring us back tomorrow evening, God, with healing where someone feels broken. We thank you for all of this in Jesus' name and let God's children say amen. Now I told you that if there's any evening you should miss, it should have been this evening. I'm just getting to waking up. The word was sleeping, but I promise you by tomorrow evening I'll be fully awake. Just come and see. I'll be fully awake. May God bless you. I don't want to scare you, but hear this preacher. The world in which we live is filled with uncertainty. So make sure you walk with God. Make sure you love him with all your heart. Because I want to see you in my Father's kingdom. I'm so glad you came tonight. And so tomorrow night, I'm taking a picture right now. I'll see you tomorrow evening. And bring somebody with you. The grace of God be with you. And the love I of God. need you. Thank you.